Okay, so obviously, we're going again. Um, that jump pack, I don't know if it's something I was doing wrong or what, but it would not send any power to my bike at all. So, after about 30 kicks, it finally fired for me. It does, luckily. Uh, I put a, a backup Kickstarter on this bike. And uh, I was there for a while, at least 25 minutes, and then I was starting to worry because Kent hadn't caught back up with me yet. So I took off, and I just ran into him, and he said that he went like a, over a log or something and got attacked by a bunch of hornets. So he stung several times. Try to get around this mud hole without getting down in it. It's nasty mud. Hope he gasses it real good because I sunk in. Gas it, gas it, gas it. There you go. Kentucky style. That's the way we roll. Here comes Kent. I just thought I'd film this last uh, 
section back out kind of as a farewell I guess. Pretty creek. I gotta be real careful because all I'm wearing is hiking boots. <laughs> no knee pads. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but one thing I did do yesterday was go out and buy hiking boots because there's no way in the world I was going to hike this two miles back in here to get to the bike and those Alpine Stars again. Bought me some hiking boots and some hiking pants. And that's what I'm wearing now. And it was so much easier. Matter of fact, it was kind of enjoyable. Sorry about all the weeds, but this trail is just unbelievably overgrown. Pop out of the jungle and all of a sudden you're in the, in the open exposure stuff. Make sure Kent's back there. There you see his helmet coming. There he is. Just gotta watch out for stuff like that rock right there. Don't catch my foot on it. over that ditch. This trail does not get rolled very much and uh, understandably why. The first part of it, well coming the other direction anyway, is probably one of the hardest trails that I rode on the tour. Really bad exposure and a very narrow, narrow tire ledge, way narrower than this right here, with some uh, pretty good rock steps you have to climb at the same time. It makes for a scary combination. Just for a FYI, my triple dometer for the whole trip is reading 1,328 miles. So we were, I don't know, 250 miles short of finishing. It's a real shame, but we're both uh, we're both happy with the way we performed. Just the combination of the super cold, out of season weather and the hard rains and and my ignition switch. It just uh, unfortunately did us in. Whole, the whole tour, all the trails were fun, with the exception of the second half of day two after the sand dunes. I can't remember if I filmed any of that or not, but it was <laughs> basically every bit of a hundred miles of this two track through these lava fields. So it was, you know, tall weeds, I don't know, they were maybe knee high, and then two 
tracks through the weeds. There were, there were like trucks spaced apart and you could pick one or the other, but there was all these rocks constantly. Um, the type of rocks that give you pinch flats. And you had to really watch and it was just relentless. It just went on and on and on. And there was a mountain in the distance that we had a challenge point on and we could see it way off in the distance. And the more you went, it just didn't seem like it got any closer. It was just, you know, like probably four hours of that stuff. And it, uh, you, I mean, it was, you could ride it fast if you wanted to, but you would you'd be guaranteed a flat tire just because of those lava rocks and those big rocks embedded in the ground. It was, it was nuts. That was the only, the only part of the trip that wasn't enjoyable. The, uh, the, ro the road section that we had to ride for about 50 miles to get around the fire, it was more enjoyable than, uh, than that daggone lava field. I'm sure he gets through that okay. Of course, I shouldn't have to worry. He is a absolutely fantastic rider. He will make most young guys look silly, especially on technical, technical single track. The more technical, the better he does on it. your foot pegs and stuff like that. And my foot injury from several days ago that uh, that happened when I was filming, it's it's totally fine now. I think it was just a sprain. Thankfully, because uh, <laughs> if it wasn't, I probably wouldn't have been able to walk out of here two days ago. I'm a little worried about him because of those bee stings. I didn't think to ask him whether he's allergic to them, but <clears throat> that's another reason why I keep looking back for him, making sure he's doing all right. I had to do a balance check right there. What have you... There's quite a few people that doubted the old DR on this rod. Some people think it's just too heavy or too weak or too old or whatever, but if it hadn't been for that ignition switch, I'm confident that I would have finished. And yes, I would have made it up um, Ant Hill. No, no question. We ride stuff just like that in Kentucky. Um, yeah, it looked bad, but I would have made it. So, uh, don't ever underestimate bikes like this. For me, I think it was an advantage. Um, I would I would ride this bike again over a, a modern a modern bike, an XYZ bike, if you will. I just trust it more. Um, it lugs better. The suspension is better in the rocks and the roots. So that's just my take on it. I know everybody has their opinions, but uh, I have no doubt this bike would make it. And at least some said, "Well, it's gonna be too heavy to pick up." Well, I only had to pick it up once. And uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't, nothing at all.
even with the luggage on it. Only reason that I dropped it uh, that one time was a, a, a stick went in my front wheel and locked it up. Just kind of fell over. Wouldn't even wouldn't even call it a crash. Okay, here's the. Uh, Here's where we came in, Kent told me here, and if you go straight, that is where I came in two days ago and also had to hike back out. From this point on, that trail gets super hard. You doing okay? So I guess the last little obstacle is getting across this creek without getting my feet too wet, which is probably a given, but these rocks are just so slick, you almost have to put your feet down at some point. It's pretty deep right here in the beginning, too. Just gotta go for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did not have to put my feet down, I can't believe it. Even though I was all over the place. Okay, ATV track. All the way back to the truck, not very far. You guys saw about half of it when we were he was toting me. Things actually feels different without the luggage on the back. Turns quicker. Rear shock works way better. Before with all that weight back there, it went it would blow through the travel on these water breaks, but now it's uh, it's acting like it should. I think I'd do this again, I'd, I'd go with a stiffer spring. Even though what I got on there now is stiffer than stock, it just wasn't stiff enough for that weight I was carrying. I thought I had it dialed, but it was definitely better than when I started, but it still was just a little too soft. In, in normal trails, it actually worked fine, but when you get on stuff like these water breaks and, uh, and G-out bumps, it just blew right through the travel. I should give a little plug for my Kentucky Adventure Tour. I just, when I went over that jump, I looked down and saw the sticker on my fender. So I do something similar to this in Kentucky called the Kentucky Adventure Tour, or K-A-T, CAT. It's nothing, nothing hard like this, but it is, uh, it's hard if you're on a big adventure bike. It can be done with a good set of tires, but uh, you know, I recommend bikes like this or uh, you know, 650 singles, like a 650L or DR, as long as, as, long as you got knobbies. Um, give it a shout, search it on Facebook, Kentucky Adventure Tour. If you live in the east and can't, can't get out here to do nine days of this, try the Kentucky Adventure Tour. It should take you five or six days, depending on whether you do the hard sections or not. It's a lot of fun. It's getting really, really popular. You can do it at any time of the year you like, too. So it's not like this, where you only have a a three month window when there's not snow on the ground. You can uh, you can ride in the winter if you you know if you got the warm warm and dry gear for it. And a little wheelie action. 
Wear that turn off. That's amazing how much better this bike handles with all that all the weight on it. Look at that view. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful day. If only those three or four days on the tour had been like this, it would have been a game changer. Know some uh, there's a team that's uh, well right now they're they're on day five or I'm sorry day six this would actually be day seven but a couple days ago they posted a picture from one of the challenge points and uh, there was quite a bit of snow on the ground so uh, hopefully those guys are dressed for it or, or they'll be suffering like we did. I want to give a big thanks to the guys that put this tour on. I, I can't even fathom, even though I've, I've done the cat and people tell me they don't understand how I put it all together, but this is on a whole different scale. Yeah, it's 600 miles more than the cat, but it, 
just a sheer vast the land this is up here it's unbelievable I, the way Martin and all his team put this together is just absolutely incredible and, and blows my mind um, fantastic job those guys are amazing and then they change it every year you know so they'll make changes so for instance I wouldn't do this but if somebody wanted my track from this year and, and make a run out next year they they would not be a finisher because he will know that uh, that that particular person followed tracks from the year before and they would they wouldn't get it so uh, I, I totally get the, the, the planning that goes into this that you have to do each year and like I say, it's, it's different from year to year, so you can't use somebody's tracks from the year before. Here you will get it wrong. Ken and I started in January planning for this and mapping it. I, I wouldn't doubt that we each have 10 man hours per day. Uh, for or 10 man hours per day of the tour, just mapping alone. Because don't they don't give you the tracks, they give you waypoints and a, and a road, road book. And you have to connect those waypoints, drawing tracks, but going by what the roadbook states. So it's a lot of pre-work that goes into it, but it's it's well worth it. it. What it does is it forces you to learn the trail by memory and not just go out here and follow a line. And I totally understand that, and I'm, I'm glad they do it that way. It, kinda, it more reminds me of a, uh, a Dakar rally. In a way, it's not a race, but um, in Dakar rally, uh, the smartest guy wins, the guy that knows how to navigate and go, well in this case you don't have to go to real you know, race pace like those guys do, but um, you do have to keep up a, a really good pace every day or, or you will not make, uh, make it to the next town before the gas stations close, and, which is usually around 8 o'clock at night. I think I've mentioned this before, and then they don't open again until 8 the next morning. Well, if you get in late, don't get your gas before you go to bed, the next morning you'll have to wait till those gas stations open and by that time you're three hours behind because um, most mornings you need to leave either before the sun comes or right comes up or right as the sun's coming up to to again make the uh, make your stop for the next night hope I didn't miss a turn Yeah, I think this is right. I think that's the truck's right up to my left. Yeah, I just didn't see our tracks back there and it worried me for a second. So here's Dan's, uh, quote, beater Toyota, which is uh, way nicer than my personal truck. <laughs> Dan, you are the man, my friend. I don't know how we would have done this uh, without you uh, so kindly loaning us your truck. Thank you so much. And here comes Kent, as usual. He has uh, one badass rider. And uh, that's it, folks. we got about a four or five hour drive to get back to the hotel. <laughs>